Well, good evening, y'all. I know I've been away for a while, and I'll probably be away for a little while after this, too. Uh, I've gotten kind of hooked into some non-role-playing game things. Uh, I'm not exclusively into role-playing games. I did tabletop games, too, and things like that, and I've got a life, and I don't do this for a living. So don't expect me to be coughing up a video every day, because that will never be me. Uh, but I have something to say. Just like everybody else, I have something to say. Uh, but I'm not going to talk about the OGL. Well, not much. <laughs> okay. Because what's really happening here happened a long time ago. Way before the OGL was even a thing. Uh, so, the uh, Dungeons and Dragons is dead. A little clickbaity, I know, but it is. Uh, Watsy killed it. But this is not something new. This is something that has been... This has been a slow, agonizing state of undeath for Dungeons & Dragons for a long, long time. If I haven't already pissed you, off enough, pissed you off enough to turn the video off, go ahead and do it now. Because it doesn't really matter who you are. I'm going to say something in the next 20 minutes that is going to piss you off. But that's the state we're in. That's the situation that we're in right now. So I'm making this for my sake, not yours. But I hope you enjoy it. If I do, click like and subscribe. But don't, because you're not going to like what I have to say. Let's start by getting 85% of you to write something hateful in the comments. Get Watsy's little trolls with a, with a stick 10 feet up their butts and might even get a call from a lawyer. If you believe that Dungeons and Dragons is a game, if you believe that it is a game and just a game and not a concept, not an idea, then this is not Dungeons and Dragons. Okay? If you play this, the game you are playing is not Dungeons and Dragons. What you see on the cover is just a logo. That's all it is. And that's what I'd like to talk to you about. Loyalty to a logo. Let me explain. A lot of you are going to really hate this, but this... This is Dungeons and Dragons. This was written and published in 1974. This is the game called Dungeons and Dragons. It is a game that a lot of us picked up and really enjoyed playing for a very long time. Fifth edition isn't even an edition. We'll get to that. And let me explain the difference, okay? This game was quickly followed by a publication we call the Holmes Blue Book. And it was basically written as an introduction to the uh, three little books that I just showed you. A lot of people believe that this was meant as an introduction to Advanced Dungeons and & Dragons. And as far as Gary Gygax was concerned, it probably was. But as far as Eric Holmes was concerned, Eric? I think it's Eric. Um, Dr. Holmes, how's that? As far as Dr. Holmes was concerned, uh, this was really an introduction to this. Because whatever you might say about Gary Gygax's original Dungeons & Dragons rules, they sucked. Okay, These are poorly written, poorly organized. They make assumptions about the player that are just ridiculous. Basically, unless you were a hardened war, player, war game player, you weren't going to have a clue how to play this game. So we all just kind of made it up because very few of us were hardened war games players. I, I became a war games player as a result of this, not before this. Okay. So after the Holmes edition came out, there was a split. Okay. But whatever else you say, this is Dungeons and Dragons. Because it literally has the same rules as the three little books. It just only goes up a few levels and has a smattering of monsters. It was meant to be an introduction into those three books because they were so poorly written that a, a, a neophyte needed this to really get started playing the rules. Now, 
it also included some uh, kind of player driven conventions that were kind of developed after the release of the original game but that's neither here nor there because the, the base the core of the game is still the same not similar to not a new edition of the same as the three little books now this game was followed by this this is the first edition advanced at dungeons and dragons and this is a new edition now what makes this an edition of the original dungeons and dragons is that it is backwards compatible with the original Dungeons & Dragons. You can take a first edition Advanced Dungeons & Dragons character and very easily roll him back and play uh, uh, the original campaign with it. You just have to tweak a few of the statistics and the uh, ability scores. Uh, the ability statistics are a little different. This tends to have higher bonuses for higher like strength, endurance, or strength, constitution, wisdom, intelligence, whatever. This had more and greater benefits to having higher stats. But that's about the only difference. But this is an improvement on the original game. But it is basically compatible with the original game. This is still Dungeons & Dragons. Okay? So, is this. Okay? We all recognize this one. Uh, well, all of us old farts do. I didn't play this as much as I wish I had because I had already been hooked into the Advanced Dungeons and & Dragons and I was kind of invested there. Uh, but the uh, the Red Book is, I mean, what, what can I say, but kind of a revolutionary change. The, the Moldvay edition, the uh, Beckme or BX. This is still Dungeons & Dragons because it is, again backwards compatible with the original game and for the most part cross compatible with the advanced game okay there are a couple of uh, you'll have a few problems transferring over demi-human characters from this to advanced Dungeons and dragons because it has a fundamentally different take on what a demi-human character can be uh, but as a rule you can just cross them over and in fact i did on a few occasions let demi-human characters from the basic game into my advanced campaign, and I never regretted it. The balance always stayed reasonable. The characters were interesting. It worked, okay? By the way, elves in this game are amazing, okay? So let's move on. This game is not Dungeons & Dragons! Yes, it is. This game is Dungeons & Dragons, and in my opinion, it is unfairly maligned by a lot of people. Uh, this is actually a pretty good game. Is it a significant improvement over first edition Dungeons & Dragons? This would be the second edition advanced the Dungeons & Dragons. I would say no. It's not a significant improvement. Uh, there are actually some things that I think advanced Dungeons & Dragons does much better. Uh, specifically, I'm referring to uh, resource management. Uh, Dungeons & Dragons was very resource management oriented. Things like how many lanterns, how many torches, how much oil you brought with you, encumbrance, that kind of thing. This is where, in my opinion, Dungeons & Dragons started to slip away from those elements of the game, which I always considered extremely important to the game. So I never really adopted the second edition uh, for table play. I did adopt a few of the rules, okay? Uh, when non-proficiency penalties came out, uh, when non-weapon proficiencies came out in first edition, I did not adopt them. Because it came out as a part of the Oriental Adventures. Uh, and I wasn't there yet. I, I, the, the, the skills were not really appropriate to a Eurocentric campaign, which I run. And uh, I just didn't go there. But I did adopt the non-weapon proficiency rules from the second edition. It's not completely without merit. It also dropped a lot of stuff that I loved. No demons. No demons? Come on. What do you Evil. Evil is supposed to have demons, but they were we had our we had our little thing going back there called the Satanic Panic, which is actually having lived through that and living now through the uh I don't know what to call it, the Wokanic Panic. Uh, very similar. Very similar. Uh, ostracization condemnation, uh, like our jobs are in trouble, our families are harassed. I mean, it's all very similar. 
to the say living through the satanic panic back then is living through the volcanic panic now but um they tried to they tried to appease they tried to placate the satanic panic people with this edition uh stupid mistake because people like that cannot be placated they can only be confronted so this is dungeons and dragons not my favorite versions of Dungeons and Dragons, but it is backwards compatible with Advanced Dungeons and Dra Dragons and cross compatible with BX. This is Dungeons and Dragons. This is not Dungeons and Dragons. Okay, this is not a bad game, but it is not in any way, if mechanically, in any way similar to this. There is no compatibility at all. This is a completely new game with a Dungeons and Dragons logo slapped on it. Okay? This is not Dungeons and Dragons. Unless you're willing to make a certain concession and we'll get to that. Okay? But this is not Dungeons and Dragons. If you play this, the game you're playing, it's not the game that I grew up with. It's not the game that they played in Stranger Things. Uh, it's not the game that we played in... It's not the game that we played when we built this city. This is a different game. This is more Dungeons and Dragons than this. Because this is backwards compatible, cross compatible with Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, Basic Dungeons and Dragons, and the original game. This is, this is Dungeons and Dragons. This is not. It's not the same game. So if this is the game you're playing, it's not Dungeons and Dragons. Any more than 5th edition is Dungeons and Dragons. 4th edition is not Dungeons and Dragons. And I'm not going to show you my 4th edition copy, because I threw it away. It was that bad. 3rd uh, edition is at least a good game. 4th edition was trash. I mean, just trash. Now, this is Dungeons & Dragons. This is Dungeons & Dragons. This is Dungeons and Dragons. Okay? These are all actual actual relatives of the original game, including this one, which was not published by Wizards of the Coast. Uh, it was published by Troll Lord Games and still is published by Troll Lord Games. And it is a closer, more honest modern rule set using the original Dungeons and Dragons as a core, okay? And believe it or not, even though the mechanics of the game are extremely different between Castles and Crusades and 1st, 2nd, BX, original D&D, there is actually a backwards compatibility with those versions of the game. You can use your monster manual. You can use your first or second edition monster manual with castles and crusades you can use your old modules with castles and crusades it will work okay these games are dungeons and dragons much more so than anything wizards of the coast has ever published okay what wizards of the coast does is every few years it decides it wants more revenue so it creates a completely new game and slaps a DD logo on before I move on, just in response to the OGL situation that's going on, I would like to remind you that there are a lot of excellent fantasy role-playing games that are not Dungeons & Dragons, that have never been Dungeons & Dragons, that are completely separate from Dungeons & Dragons. Okay? Dungeons & Dragons was just one game in a, in a litany of other games 
I'm sure if I searched my office, I could find other examples. This is just what I pulled off my shelf real quick. You know, you notice all the leaning books before I started this video. Okay. Now, we've talked about the game Dungeons and Dragons and what it means, at least to me. But if you are looking as, at Dungeons and Dragons as a game continuity, what Wizards of the Coast killed it a long, long time ago. Okay? Well, Dungeons and Dragons has been dead since 3rd edition came out. Okay? Unless. And here's something I want you to try to wrap your head around. Unless you consider this to be Dungeons and Dragons, which in a way it is. This is certainly every bit as much Dungeons and Dragons as 5th edition. This is every bit as much Dungeons and Dragons as 4th edition. This is every bit as much Dungeons and Dragons as 3rd edition. Okay? So unless you are willing to concede that Dungeons and Dragons is just a brand, just a logo, then you have to accept that Wizards of the Coast doesn't really own Dungeons and Dragons. It may own a legal right to the logo, but it doesn't own the idea. It doesn't own the concept of a fantasy role-playing game at all. Okay, so you have two choices. Either this is Dungeons and Dragons, or this is not. There's no middle ground. This is why I'm telling you I'm going to piss off everybody here, okay? Because Dungeons and Dragons is dead. It has been dead for a long time. Watsi did kill it. But Dungeons and Dragons lives without Wizards of the Coast, okay? So, good news, bad news, right? We have no idea. I'm not going to sit here and talk about the OGL and uh, pretend that I'm a lawyer and that I know what I'm talking about. We have no idea how the courts are going to hash this out. I suspect that the big dogs will take on Wizards of the Coast. Uh, between them, they can cough up a half a million dollars, which is according to an informed source uh, whom I've linked to below. I strongly suggest checking, checking out his video, videos. Uh, According to him, that's what we're looking at, about a half a million dollars. Uh, they can cough that up, and if they do, I think they'll win. Uh, but they won't win big, okay? I think they'll be able to continue publishing the way they publish. There's a lot of these, uh, like Crew Castles and Crusades operates under the old OGL. Uh, they didn't need to do that, and they shouldn't have done that, okay? Uh, all of you who... Uh, are operating and have been operating your businesses under the original open gaming license, I told you so. Well, I guess I didn't tell you so because I wasn't making YouTube videos. But you can't trust these corporations, okay? You just can't trust them. They will fuck you over every time. Well, there goes any monetization I might have ever gotten on this video, but ça la vie. Uh... The new open now the new open uh, uh, gaming license. I'm not going to talk much about it. I do want to say a couple of things uh, before I let y'all go and, and get back to my uh, my uh, Neverwinter Nights module. Uh, if you sign the open gaming license version 1.1, you are a fucking idiot. You are just too fucking stupid to vote. If you sign this, you have signed away your rights for everything related to your content, and you deserve whatever you get. If you trust a billion dollar multinational corporation with your intellectual property, which they will 
have complete rights to, two, one of two things is going to happen. You are either going to fail dismally or you are going to have your content stolen. It's that simple. Do not sign the OGL 1.1. I love that they think we're that stupid. That they think that we don't have lawyers who play d and I love that they think that they could just throw this out there and give us seven days to read this nine thousand word document in legalese and they think we're just going to sign it because we don't have time to go talk to a lawyer they really do think we're idiots okay wizards of the coast really thinks we're stupid if they thought they could slide this past us without us noticing uh, they don't think that anymore now here's the deal i would not be at all shocked to see wizards of the coast backpedal from here but but, but when someone shows you what they are, believe them. No matter how far backwards Wizards of the Coast backpedals from here, don't. Don't. Don't go back. Okay? Let them go. They've showed you what they are. They've showed you what they want. And just because they're backing off this time doesn't mean they're not going to try to get what everything in the end that they want. They will come back for you. They will wait until you've memory hold this whole thing. Maybe seventh edition rolls out. They will do this again because that's what corporations do. I think they're, they're, the fan reaction, I think it's going to hurt their sales. I think that's one of the reasons they've held back for a few days. They're trying to get a large enough sample built up to decide whether or not this is actually hurting their sales. Uh, newsflash. I haven't spent any money on 5th edition lately. I am gobbling up every piece of third-party content I can get my hands on before this new OGL goes through. I have spent at least $1,000 buying... Everything I ever wanted from Old School Essentials, Dungeon Crawl Classics, uh, uh, Castles and Crusades. Just I am, I am just throwing money at these third-party uh, uh, companies because I want to get it. I want to get that stuff before it becomes, before it goes away, because it is going to go away. Okay, regardless of what happens from here, once this OGL goes through, there's going to be some big upheaval in this industry and don't kid yourself that they're going to stop at seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars they're going to start at seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars as far as these corporate cocksuckers are concerned they own the intellectual property for dungeons and dragons and everything you guys are making is theirs and they are eventually going to claim it all because that's how these people think now I've rambled on about this OGL thing, and I know I promised not to, but just want to ask, has there anyone else noticed that this new OGL only applies to basically PDFs and books, but they're making the game into a virtual tabletop platform, and it specifically excludes digital content? So... Basically, if that's not enough, if the, if the whole we're going to take all your intellectual property and not pay you anything isn't enough of a fuck you, uh, how are you supposed to make custom content for a digital game, which this is becoming now, a digital game, one d d is a digital game, if you can't create digital content for it? Just wondering. Anyway, enough on that. Enough on that. I, I, I could go on about this for hours, but I'm not a lawyer. So call your lawyer. Seriously, if you're a content creator, do not sign the OGL. Call a lawyer. You're going to pay a lot less for a lawyer now than you're going to pay Wizards of the Coast later if you don't do this. Okay? Now, where do we go from here? Hmm? Do we just throw up our hands and... Give it up.
I submit no. Again, I'm not a lawyer, but it just seems to me that a lot of these, a lot of these uh, games that are you that are be currently being published under the uh, 1.0a OGL don't need to be. They're using it in a way to kind of hedge their bets, but Castles and Crusades, they don't copy anything out of the system reference document from Wizards of the Coast. There's nothing. It's all new creative presentation. I think that they can get away with just taking the OGL license off and just continue publishing. I think uh, Wizards will probably try to come and get them, but again, I think these are the big dogs, and they've got enough money to fight. I think that if they fight on that grounds, they'll win. The little guys, you're going to have to take your shit down, okay? The moment you get a cease and desist from Wizards of the Coast, you don't get to argue. You don't have the money to fight these guys. This is America. Liberty and justice for all who can afford it, okay? And the odds are, if you're one of the little dogs making Dungeons & Dragons content, you can't afford it. So just, we're screwed. You're screwed. Just, just take it down, okay? Um pop it on a torrent or something so it's untraceable. Maybe you can distribute it that way. But you're not going to be making any more money on it. They don't care. This is Wizards of the Coast. This is Hasbro. They would rather throw your family out into a, into the cold, they have you homeless and starving and freezing to death in the wintertime, than give up a nickel on their bottom line. Okay? They have the resources to come and get you, and they will do it. Even if they know the lawsuit is frivolous, even if they know they're going to lose, they're going to file it against you anyway because they know you can't fight. And this is America. Liberty and justice for all who can afford it. Okay? And you can't afford it. Let the big dogs fight this out. Take your shit down. If you get the cease and desist, stick it on a file, stick it on a hard drive someplace, and wait for the big dogs to work this out. Okay? Again, I'm not a lawyer. So what options do we have beyond that? If we want to continue to make money, what can we do? Well, we can publish without the OGL. How do we do that? Well, in the United States, and I can't speak to any other country, but in the United States, and again, I'm not a lawyer, but I do know that you cannot... You cannot copyright procedures and rules, okay? You can't. It's just not copyrightable material. Uh, if you could, somebody would own the copyright to football, golf, right? Monopoly. But nobody owns the copyrights to these. And it, it's, it, it, why do you think you have Dallasopoly, Burlingtonopoly, Tallahasseeopoly? It's because anybody can create a Monopoly game. They just can't use the little rich money, what's his name, Mr. Moneybags? They can't use the word monopoly, but they, they can anyone can make a monopoly game because you cannot copyright uh, rules and procedures. You can, you can patent rules and procedures, but the, uh, the legal requirements for a patent are very different than copyright. And as a, you're just not, you're not going to be able to get a rule set through a patent office. Uh, a couple of video games managed to pull something like that off. Uh, but uh, uh, for tabletops, liter literature, you are never, ever going to be able to patent a process for a video game, for a, for a role-playing game, tabletop game, whatever. It's just not possible. Uh, the, the patent requirements are very different from copyright. So what you have to do is you have to publish without infringing on copyright, which means you can use the mechanics of any version of D&D that you want. You just can't use the creative presentation of the mechanics that the original publisher used. So, and this is something y'all are going to have to do, because I'm not one of you, okay? I'm not a content creator. The, the little things that you see, the little freebies that I throw down, in the that's stuff that I use in my own games, and I let y'all have access to it. And I have no idea what I'll put on the bottom of this one, but I'm always going to put something in one of my videos. So I'll find something cool to put down here. Probably something from one of my favorite uh, uh, third-party creators uh, because those games are awesome, by the way. Just awesome. 
So how do you identify it? Well, you just don't use logos or trademarks. You have an agreement amongst yourselves and you just start creating. First of all, you have to create system reference documents, which are unique from Wizards of the Coast's system reference documents. And you as a community, there's enough of you to get that done like that. Like that. Okay? Uh, there's enough of you. I mean, there's some already exist, right? System reference document for first edition Dungeons and Dragons. It's already there, okay? Uh, there's no reason you can't do that. For, and there's actually all of the older editions. Uh, there's the uh, there's the for the more modern editions, the, which a lot of you love. And by the way, don't think for one minute that I am playing you down because you like 3.5 Dungeons and Dragons. That's actually a pretty good game. I don't consider it Dungeons & Dragons, at least not the game Dungeons & Dragons. I consider it Dungeons & Dragons in the larger kind of context of what Dungeons & Dragons is, but I don't consider it D&D the way I played d d It's a totally different game, again, with just a logo slapped on it. But if that's what you love, play it. And we're going to talk more about that. That's going to be my, my final wallop at the end of this video. So what you do is you have to create these system reference documents. You have to get your heads together, you have to cooperate and collaborate and expect not to make any money on this, okay? You have to create these system re reference documents for any version that you want to actually create content for. I think the fifth edition <laughs> is crying out for the most attention, okay? So create your own system reference documents. Uh, just a website, you can set it up like a wiki, you can all work on it and then when it's set up the way you like it, just one page at a time, review it and lock the page, review it and lock the page, review it and lock the page. Your own system reference document for 5e. Don't step on their copyrightable material because you can bet they're going to go over it with a fine tooth comb. Looking for art, don't use any art. Just don't use any art. You don't need any art, okay? They're going to comb it for uh, uh, plagiarism, so don't use any word for word out of any of the rule books or any of the system reference documents uh, that Wizards of the Coast publishes. They're going to look for that. You can use generic terms, strength, intelligence, wisdom, dexterity, constitution, charisma. These are all general rules that everyone uses to describe personality traits and, and personal traits. So you can use those, right? But you can't use Melf's Acid Arrow. Uh, you could create your own spell and just call it Acid Missile, right? Uh, magic missile, kind of on the fence there, but it is magical and it is a missile, and those are two very generic terms. I don't see any reason why you couldn't play that out in court as, but, Your Honor, they're magical and they're missiles. What are we supposed to call it? But if you want to play it on the safe side, call it the Enchanted Missile. You can't call it Nistel's Magic Aura, but you can call it Enchanted Aura, right? So create your own system reference documents without stepping on any of the copyrighted material from Wizards of the Coast. Don't use any characters or anything like that. And now, that is your version 1, version 2, version 3, version 3.5, version 4, version 5 system reference documents. And then on your materials, you just write compatible with version 5. Everyone knows what that means because we've been talking to each other. You are the content creators. You have the community's ears. Some of you have tens of thousands of followers on Twitter. I got my ass booted off Twitter, but that's a different story. We'll talk about that later. I will do a video on that because I do want to talk about that, but later. But you have the social media, you have the visibility and the presence to make known that version five means, and I'll be yelling it from the rafters, version five, or whatever you want to call it. You guys put your heads together and come up with names, okay? Uh, that that means it's 5th edition compatible. And now the people who love 5th edition can, con can continue to play 5th edition. And that brings me to my last and most important point. And this one, i got to tell you guys, I'm, I'm getting choked up. This comes from the heart, okay? Stop being loyal to a logo. It's a logo. That's all it is. Okay, 6th edition D&D &D is not D&D. &D. Okay, it's just a new game with the same logo slapped on it. Stop being loyal to a logo. If you love 5th edition, 
play 5th edition. And I don't care whether you call it D&D or not. You love the game. Keep playing it. Because your loyalty should be to the game, not to the logo on the cover. And certainly not to the corporate bloodsuckers that put that logo there. Okay? Be loyal to what you love. And that is not a D&D logo. It's the game. Be loyal to the game you love. If you love first edition, play first edition. And if you can't get a copy of first edition, grab a free download. Okay? Stay true to what touches your heart. Okay, and what touches your heart is not the Hasbro Corporation. It's the people you play with. It's the experiences you have. The love in your heart is not for the company. It's not for the name Dungeons & Dragons. It's not for the logo. It is for the game that you love. Play the game that you love. Okay, folks, I gotta go. Peace out. Keep playing. The Wizards of the Coast cannot take that away from us. I love y'all. Maybe if there's some them on board, it'll be hard, particularly in the current day and age where, well, material is getting more and more expensive, but it might be worth an effort. Though, one of the big issues is. I looked through the list of people who have signed. Hey, as far as I can see, this isn't tequila. Biggest.